This week, we're taking a look at Airbus's brand new ACJ220 Creative Studio, where customers can design their private jet cabin and see just how much space they have to play with. And after that, we're headed to Geneva on board an ACJ319 Neo. It's a frustratingly short flight at just 45 minutes, but still a fantastic experience. So join me for a quick hit of the private jet life. Welcome to Toulouse, where we're with Airbus in the Airspace Cabin Mock-Up Center once again. Uh, if you've seen our Airbus video, we paid a visit here last year. It was really fun to see. And now we're here for a special event. They're opening up, for the first time, the Creative Studio, so-called, for the ACJ220, which is the corporate jet version of the much-loved Airbus A220, much loved by me and this channel, anyway. The Creative Studio is a place where customers for the aircraft, of which I wish I were one, can come and customize their aircraft looking at all the material options, layout options, with projections on the floor, with virtual reality. The result is you get a kind of incredibly in-depth and realistic experience of what your choices for the aircraft cabin are going to look and feel like. So you can spend a day here, choose everything you need and come away with sort of a finished aircraft that you've already seen and it may take a few years for it to actually become a real aircraft that you can fly right now they're sold out until 2025 even if you place an order today uh, but but you will have gotten a good sense i think of what that plane will look and feel like so you know you're going to be happy with what you chose the acj220 which will make its debut next year looks like a very compelling offering Airbus says it brings an unprecedented combination of range, size, and price to the market. In the past, if you wanted both space and range like this, you'd have had to pay for a larger jet, and the higher cost to operate it too. Airbus says the A220's long legs and large cabin combined with lower costs mean it's a compelling counter to the likes of what Gulfstream and Bombardier can offer. The idea for Airbus here is to give customers, as well as those on the fence, a real sense of the difference in cabin size and the possibilities that opens up. There's a fun table where if you throw down a carpet swatch, the system will update to show what that looks like in the cabin, for example. You can also throw on a virtual reality headset and walk through the cabin. Some of this might look gimmicky at first glance, but if I were outfitting my new jet, I'd love to have this sort of thing to really plan everything out before signing on the dotted line. Anyway, time for a little food and drink. And check this out, the first wind tunnel model of the Concorde. How about that for a collector's item? Let's get to the part where we fly on a private jet, shall we? But first, an unexpected piece of history. We're about to go get on board the ACJ 319 Neo to fly from Toulouse to Geneva, which is super fun, but in the meantime, we're uh, in this building, which apparently was the original airport in Toulouse, and it looks it. It is old and crumbling. In fact, some of the facade looks like it's just been left to rot. I guess they're about to decommission this place. They're gonna stop using it. But for now, it seems to be the FBO here where they, where they handle uh, at least a certain number of uh, business jet flights. So uh, really cool. There's also these old airline placards up there, half of which are airlines that no longer exist and uh, fun to see a bit of history. Though, if I were a private jet customer, I'd be expecting something a little more flashy, probably, uh, on my departure after my meeting with Airbus. But anyway, cool to see. I had no idea. I really didn't expect this. So here's the bad news. We were told that the owner of this aircraft doesn't want too many shots of the cabin out in the world. I'm not sure why, since the interior is pretty generic. It looks like the demo model in a cabin mock-up at an air show. But anyway, that meant most of the shots I could get were out the window. But I did my best to give you a sense of the cabin too. Luckily it's a very nice wing anyway. 
The ACJ319neo is of course a beautiful aircraft overall in private jet form. Did you know Airbus uses special humidifiers to raise the cabin humidity level higher than the commercial equivalent would ever be able to? It's also noticeably quiet in here, even behind the wing. You barely hear the engines, even as we take off like a rocket out of Toulouse. The only other shame about this is that it's just a 45 minute flight, far too short for this kind of thing. Still, it's pleasant and relaxing. These seats recline pretty much all the way back. I actually didn't expect them to go that far. And how about this, a tail camera A350 style on the 319, that is awesome. And there's a sofa, which is quite a novelty on an aircraft. Exit door, shower, nice. The only real non-generic detail in here were these. I mean, Dior towels. Okay, I don't know. What fashion house would you choose to supply your private jet towels? There's just enough time to down a glass of champagne before we start descent. We come in over Lac Le Mans to make our approach into Geneva, and we're treated to some nice mountain views. By the way, since you've made it this far, how about hitting the like button on this video and maybe even subscribing? Every like helps us reach a wider audience and means we can bring more of this kind of thing to you in the future. I'm happy I got to catch a ride on my first 319 Neo. That's a relatively rare jet, with very few sold so far. And what a privilege to catch it in a private jet configuration. In Geneva, for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee.